Today I want to quickly talk about some variations on waggler floats. I've been using peacock waggler floats for just about 50 years now and one of the types of floats I like is floats with black tips. Basically the entire float is painted black and that may or may not have an insert and in the past I've made those inserts mainly out of thinner peacock quill and a float like this is exactly what I'm talking about and this floats around about 10 or 11 inches long used on still water or slow moving rivers and when that sky is reflecting in the water and you're, you've got this big expanse of basically white water a black tip shows really really well even better than a red tip over the uh, past couple of years, I've been slowly replacing many of the old wagglers like this with newer versions. Some of these floats are, are very old. This one is at least 30 years old, still works all right. It's had a bit of a, a touch up paint job in uh, the last couple of weeks. Still using it and uh, it's got a bulk there of three treble A and a couple of number one shot and then down the line that would take a couple of eights and ten so these um, number one shot could be split up into more number eights down the line and so on and the swim I was fishing that I'll show a bit of footage of ran about 11 or 12 foot deep and there was a bit of drift and this got under the drift fine a float I've been using for two or three years uh, uh, these that I've made up this one's nine on a foot long and what I've done is bought these hollow pole float tips on eBay and you can get them up to three millimeters diameter on eBay but if you go to the the main supplier Rizov if you just google Rizov pole float tips you can get these tips to thicker that one there's three mil this one here is three and a half they do a four and a half and a five but that's very visible when they're supplied they've got black painted tip at the bottom and they've got they're capped off at the top and what I've done and I'll show a close-up of that I've done a scoop out of the side so water can flow in and cut off the top and then it's just the thickness of the wall that is providing the, the buoyancy and its displacement this is Archimedes Please don't tell me, I don't know what I'm talking about. I will have £100 bets with you and win every time Archimedes was right. His head depended on it. The king demanded, he proved whether, I think it may have been a, a gold crown was truly made of gold and not a mixture of gold and silver. And he had to get it right. And he was in the bath and legend has it, he ran down the street shouting, Eureka, I have found it. He'd worked out that as he displaced the water in the bath, it gave him the idea of what to do. So what I've been, what I've just done is I want a set of floats like this, slightly with different lengths, with the three and a half millimeters. Now I've only got the fluorescent red ones. You can get yellows and you can get black. So I could send away and get some black ones, but I'm pretty confident that a thin coat of black matte paint on these tips will give me the black tip so it looks like the black float so that's not too difficult now peacocks a three and a half mil tip into peacock the peacocks not much more than that it's only about five millimeters this isn't the thickest of peacock it's fairly good but what i've done is i've made a set of four floats these haven't been glued yet i need some glue the glue I had the arrow I had has gone off so when I get a chance I should get some and I've made four floats there with about half an inch between each one getting bigger all with these three and a half mil tips I've cut the tops off I've cut the scoops out with a very sharp craft knife I'm like a scalpel I, I get new blades and so when there's some glue down in the end these tips are glued in. I've prepared the peacock, needs a little bit more 
fine sanding to key the paint in. I'll give it two very thin coats of yacht varnish and then I, I mix up my matte black paint, enamel paint, and paint the entire thing matte black. I've got a couple of very quick tips. I just use a pair of of nail scissors to cut the end, the fixed end there. So you just go, go in about two millimeters from the end and that's done. Now I lost the tip, but it's fluorescent red. I could spot it over there on the carpet. So that's ready to go in. I would like to so cut that scoop out carefully. I've got the scrap bits of peacock here. And to get the three and a half millimeter hole, I've got a, a bamboo skewer here with a sharp point. You just center it in, the, in there and gently work it in, twisting it, trying to get it nice and centered. Now that hole at its maximum is only three millimeters and you're putting a three and a half millimeter. And the, the pith around the quill bit because you don't want to split it, and very old quill can split, it has been compressed a little bit. So what I did was to take, I've got a set of these drills from B&Q. They're, they're a gold color. They're very, very sharp, very good drills. And I've taken a three and a half millimeter one. And if by hand you just, you've made the hole with the skewer, you just put that in there and turn it very gently and it will drill out that pith. It needs that pilot hole and it's very slightly, you want it, because it makes a hole bigger than three and a half meters. And then you'll see the little crumbs, the little crumbs are coming out. You might see them dropping out. So I've now got a nice hole in there. And then the, the tip, just try it with, yeah, just try it in there. That should, with a bit of luck, just that works in there nicely. So that could be glued. And the end, the end needs, the black end needs a little blob of glue in there when you push it in, because you don't want water going down in and soaking in into the inside of the, the float. And that there has got a really, like I say, a perfect join. And at the other end of the quill, you've you've just got one of these tapered cane pegs. That I just taper it with a Stanley knife and those go in there. And then I'll round off the end of that for a float adapter or even put, put an eye in. So when I finish painting them up, I'm going to have a set of very sensitive floats, four different sizes, slightly different shotting amounts and the ability to get underneath the surface a good distance and float similar to this but more sensitive than this one this one's about it's a piece of peacock in the tip and it's probably about two and a half millimeters thick so these floats although they're a millimeter thicker will be more sensitive than the two and a half millimeter but they'll be uh, about I suppose 40% more visible, a third to 40% more visible. So there's a, du a double plus with these floats. Sometimes you want a thicker tip and you, you can just have a straight piece of peacock without an insert and leave the thickness, looking for ones with a, a good taper on it. And those sort of black floats, all black with no insert, used to be very useful on uh, the Thames at Medley where the water, it, you get that big sky, there's no trees on the far bank, and that white water, and then a thicker tip, and you could drag some shot on the bottom. Very good float for that. That's it for this week. Nice short video. You need to uh, look for Peacock on the uh, eBay. You can buy, usually get hold of, um, I bought these as sort of uh, 20 pieces for four pounds, can't remember with postage on top, but at 20p each, you can make at least one float on each one. Yeah, the costs add up, but you can make floats far better than anything that's in the shops.
because you can tailor it exactly how you want. Like I say they need a bit of sanding down and then painting carefully. Leave them time to dry properly and uh, they should be really good floats. Thank you for watching and uh, goodbye for now.